um, all these fish behind me, some of them have, have these lateral lines beside their body that allow them to extend their perception of, of vibrations and movement. Um, the seals that we saw outside, they have long whiskers that allow them to extend their perception of touch. And my cat has a very long tail that allows him to enhance his, uh, his perception of, of balance. So I, I also wanted to extend my senses, so I decided to have an antenna implanted in my head. Now the antenna allows me to perceive visible and invisible colors from infrared to ultraviolet, and I also have internet connection in my head, so I can also receive colors from other parts of the world. Uh, now there's five people, uh, one in each continent, that have permission to send colors to my head whenever they want, between 10 in the morning and 10 at night, so they need to know exactly where I am. And then they can just uh, share, with the, share with me what they are looking. So some days I, I might just be looking at a, a very ugly wall somewhere, but I might be perceiving a beautiful sunset from Australia that is streaming live to my head. Or I might be just having a very, com like a very uh, boring conversation with someone and be listening to a very, very attractive uh, uh, color symphony from a supermarket. So it allows me to be in two different places at the same time. I don't feel that I'm using technology, and I don't feel I'm wearing technology. I feel that I am technology. I feel that I'm a cyborg. And the word cyborg can be uh, quite tricky, because uh, the word cyborg comes from two different words, cybernetics and organism. So depending on how we define the word cybernetics, and depending on how we define the word organism, and depending on how we define the word union, we can end up with lots of definitions of the word cyborg. So I feel cyborg in, in three different ways. I feel I'm a biological cyborg, because I am biologically, uh, uh, have in cybernetics in my bi biology, so there's an implant in my body, so that's a kind of biological biological cyborg, then I also feel a neurological cyborg because uh, my brain has been modified due to the union between a software and a brain, and I also feel I'm a psychological cyborg because I, I identify myself as a cyborg. And the amount of people that are now feeling and identifying themselves as cyborg is growing, and most of them are psychological cyborgs, and they don't have implants, they might not have even their brain modified by technology, but they identify themselves as cyborgs. And I, I receive many emails from very young people that feel like this, and it's very similar to uh, people that might be born with the body of a man, but feel that they are a woman. And in the same way that you might be born with a 100% organic body, you might feel that you're a cyborg. So it's, uh, there's a growing amount of people that feel like this and that are encountering the same problem that in the 1950s, people that wanted to have a sex reassignment surgery uh, couldn't because bioethical committees did not allow such surgeries. And nowadays, um, uh, bioethical committees are not allowing such surgeries as well. The reasons they gave back in the 50s was because uh, uh, those such, such operations were uh, not necessary because uh, they were not ethical and because um, they also um, uh, would... Um, be a bit dangerous maybe, and also because uh, what would people think if a man came into our hospital and he came out as a woman? The same reasons were given for my surgery, they didn't allow it because they thought it was uh, unethical, unnecessary, because also um, it could be dangerous, and because what would people think if people came out of our hospital with an antenna sticking out of the head? So <laughs> we had to do it on the ground, and uh, the operation was done, but it wasn't officially accepted by bioethical committees. I think this needs to change, because there's a growing amount of people that want to become cyborgs, and in a way, all of you are consciously or unconsciously uh, also in transition of becoming cyborgs. So you can notice how we are all becoming cyborgs by language. For example, 20 years ago, I'm sure most of you would say, my mobile phone is running out of battery. Now, most people say, oh, sorry, I, I'm running out of battery. So we already saying like that we are technology. So language is already changing. And also the fact that most of you are wearing technology is also a clear sign that we are in transition in a, in a different way of seeing it. You are all actually cyborg transvestites because you're wearing technology. So 
this uh, change in bioethical committees needs to change. Um, I think, um, huh. um, yes, the senses that we can create are various. It's not just uh, color. I, we can learn a lot from animal species because, um, well, no, I was going to talk about fear. I think there's a lot of fear about this union between humans and technology, and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's wrong to be afraid about this union. I think um, the reasons people give is because they see this union as unnatural, and that, uh, a union that will separate us from nature, but I feel completely the opposite. Since I'm a cyborg, I feel much more connected to nature, because now I can sense uh, colors that other animal species can perceive, like infrareds and ultraviolets. I hear through bone conduction, which is similar to dolphins. Dolphins can also hear through bone conduction, and I feel much closer to insects, because they also have antennas. So, in a way, we can also add senses from other animals, and this will allow us to feel much, much closer to nature. I feel also that uh, the sense uh, of hearing colors from other parts of the world has now, is now slowly becoming uh, a, a separate sense from color. I would call it the sense of internet because uh, receiving colors from other parts of the world also allows me to receive colors uh, from space now. So having internet connection means that I can connect the antenna to satellites and then perceive colors that are way, way far away from me. So uh, now, actually, I'm getting a bit distracted because I tried to give this talk by being connected to NASA's uh, International Space Station. So while I'm here talking to you, I'm actually hearing the colors from space. And because uh, I have the antenna connected to my mobile phone, which is streaming live images from space. So now I'm here, my body is here, but my sense of color is in space. And this is quite important because we are now in a stage of humanity that we can start separating our body from our senses, which means that we no longer need to travel away. We can actually send our senses to space. We can even 3D print ourselves in other planets and feel that we are somewhere else while we are maybe lying in bed. So maybe, perhaps, the future of spaceships will actually be very, very comfortable beds. Thank you.